Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have here uh, an Amrel. It's the LPS301. It's a uh, linear power supply, 30 watts and one exit. So that's why it's the LPS301. Um, this company, Amrel, is, uh, I think it was taken over in 2010 by uh, Ametech. And uh, it is also sold as, uh, as a Motec. It's sold as a as an Omega PSU uh, 301, and I think it's all from the metering carp, but uh, it is here, it is working. It is, uh, yeah, I think, 15 volts around 2 amps and uh, 30 volts around 1 amp. It automatically switches over, the, I think it switches the transformer with the relay. So you don't need to dissipate too much uh, heat when not necessary. And uh, yeah, it, it, it needs to be calibrated because the value in the display is not exactly what it uh, outputs. And uh, I found documentation. So, uh, of course, also we're going to open it and have a look. And uh, I will take you to the calibration procedure. Well, here it is. It looks uh, actually quite nice. And it starts up you can hear a little fan and it's a smart fan because it will uh, it's a pity it's a fan of course you would just prefer a big uh, heat sink on the back but uh, yeah you don't actually hear it until you really start to take a uh, load from it and then it automatically uh, yeah it's a smart fan so it will make more noise when you take more power uh, the output is switchable which is very nice uh, one off, doesn't look that big, it looks uh, strong. There is an option for a serial connection, but I don't have that in this one. Uh, here you have the fan. So it looks very basic, but also, yeah, I like it. It's a tight uh, look. Uh, I would have preferred that I would have put an extra OK button because now if you adjust, you can have your uh, constant voltage and constant current modes and you can just click the set button and then you can set, well now we are constant uh, voltage and if we push again, it says here still constant voltage but the UFR I set. So. They forgot to change here the display, but what you do, there is no OK button. So if you change the voltage a little bit up, like 30 volts, you need to walk all the way down to the back to set the voltage. So there is no OK button. Same for the I mode, of course. Uh, I found in the manual that it could do 2.4 amps. Uh, you can try to put three. And it will input errors, it will not do that. But I saw that you could go to point 0.4. That will still be accepted, as you can see. Okay, let's uh, show what is the problem. Well, the problem is... I think you can look at the meter in the back. Maybe I just do a little bit higher, a little bit shaky. But uh, here you can see the voltage, so we switch on. And as you can see, it says 12.99, and here it says 12.9, so it's millivolts off. So, how we calibrate this? Well, that's actually very easy. You can just uh, push the two buttons at the same time. And then you can hear it starts to make noise. And then we need to adjust this value to this value. So we try to put 9247. 9. Down, down, 2, 4. 247, 2, 4, 7. Okay. We go automatically to the next setting. 2969. So 6, 6. Nine zero six nine zero perfect. Now we'll go to current mode, so I need to switch these over, and it says 
5906. So that is 5901, I would say. 591. Now we are in 189894. 894. It restarts. And now it should be good. So if we put it back to voltage and we do it should be 13. Yes, and it is 1300. 1300. That's it. Okay, that's calibrated. Maybe we need to do it again after we open it, but uh, let's just see how easy this uh, opens. So, take the power plug out. You see, it also has uh, feet, which is nice, but it's also nice just to have not, and then you can just put it in your, uh, with your bricks. So, let's open. It seems that it does not have screws in the bottom. It only has screws in the back. And that probably means, because it is very tiny screws in the back. And if there were screws in the bottom, it probably goes up. But the screws are only a little bit in the back. So I think it probably slides, yeah, it does. Mm. That doesn't look too bad. Proper aluminium frame, metal bottom, not bad. Let's see if we can take out the bottom as well. Yes. It's actually quite smart. They put some metal sliders and it just slides in the aluminium frame. No. So if we take a closer look, I can maybe zoom in a little bit. Here, here we have the whole processor area. Some uh, storage to save your calibration. Uh, the the little bit, uh, and if we look at the rest of the board here, this is the power supply itself. Let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just the power itself, and here we have the power supply to go out. Here is the relay that switches over to uh, 15. I think the, it is uh, the threshold is 16 volts and it switches over from uh, from 2 amps to 1 amp 30 volt. And uh, we have some cooling here. Here you can see is the... Can I zoom in on that? Uh, here is the heat sinks it's two put together and the air is pulled through it and then you have here the main transistor and the driver and on the other side it's exactly the same but i did see that the soldering was not that good as you can see, when I'm zoomed in here, you see that the pin is almost loose. And maybe it's because it went hot and cold and hot and cold, and then it starts, of course, to move a little bit. But this really needs attention. And, and the other side was exactly the same. So that is what I will fix. And also in the, here in the back, you see here is still a hole. And I'm not sure I want to keep that because so maybe I put a little bit of tape here 
uh, also because the holes here are in the back so there is around here and then so if you want to have movement not directly into the fan here you close this and then it will really get all its air here so also that is what i would like to fix now because this is about here also in the top we have those air holes so all the air stays sort of in the back and to get the flow that you really get the flow like this you need to be sure that this is closed here in both sides so i will try to do that and uh yeah, fix the soldering. Yeah, it's probably exactly the same. Let's see if we can have a better look now. Yes, here it is exactly the same. This can also use some new solder. Now about the soldering, I thought I needed to take the board out, but we can actually just uh, access here. And from the bottom, it looks good. Uh, but there are only one or two connections, the rest of the connections are on the top. So this actually looks looks proper, but really from the top it doesn't. So I think I will put there some extra. So, okay, that does look uh, a lot better than the proper soldering. And I put some tape on the fan, uh, really to, to close the air everywhere. And that all the air really is pulled through the, through the heat sink. And indeed, I feel there is a lot of air going through now. So that is a lot more effective. And I fixed a little bit of the soldering. So it is a better connection and we can close it up. So I put it back together again. I think it looks uh, amazing. Uh, I do usually the front, I, I clean after I do all my other stuff with just a multi-purpose cleaner. And then it just gives you a very, very nice uh, shine. Uh, let's see if uh, the calibration that we did is still good. We'll zoom in a little bit. You can see both the meters here and the meters here. We are here on 12.00. See, can you see that? 12.00. I will turn the camera. Okay, that's a better look. Why well, you can see it's uh, output is switched off. It's on 12 volts. I connected it to my uh, Kidley in the back. No. Let's see there. And if we put the outputs on, look at that. 12.0000. That is what we like to see. <laughs> so that was it. Quick uh, cleanup and uh, calibration. I hope uh, you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.